This is the Max Ace Sandstorm K, and this is a big old folder. Uh, just absolutely beautiful in my eye. That's why I bought it initially, um, knowing that it's a big, beautiful, double peaked clip point. And made by Max Ace. Now, I had a Max Ace years ago, and I regret now that I ever got rid of it, but it was a really cool knife. Um, and frankly, I don't remember what it was called, but it was a worn cliff and just a very cool design. Interesting, they make small batches. It seems Max Ace makes small batches and makes them available in a less than regular fashion, at least. Um, maybe I shouldn't even say that, uh, but I. I they are kind of catch as catch can, and right now you can catch them. So uh, look for some of these Max Ace designs. They're so cool, and their design, their build is just incredible. The way they build these knives, they're they're really nicely done. And lately they've had some big ones out. This one in the Goliath come to mind. Uh, Goliath, that's a pretty obvious reference to its size. Um, so that's that's one to check out too. But the design of this one really um, excites me because of that blade shape. The blade is very, let's see, how long is it? It's quite long. Let's see, let me put it right here. One, two, three, four, and about a half inches. Four and a half inches long, and I'd say about four inches of cutting length, maybe more due to the curve. Um, you've got a nice giant thumb stud on both sides that I really like a swedge, and then this swale that you can put your thumb in um, that is also jimped. You've got a little place here you can come up if you need to, if you need to uh, choke up. Got a little area there. This is K110 blade steel, and like D2, it, this thing is really wickedly sharp. And I think that this is due to the um, geometry of this knife. It's a very, it's a pretty stout um, blade thickness. Not not anything like a XM24 or anything like that, but it's a pretty stout blade thickness. And it is so high. It's got an inch and a quarter of uh, grind length here for that bevel, so that as it reaches the edge, it's almost zero ground. So it's really thin. It's a very thin and slicey, cutty blade, uh, surprisingly for the size of it. You look at it, you think it's just gonna be a big giant hard use knife, but it's thin and slicey on this big platform. And uh, so speaking of the platform, it's got a big uh, stop pin there. It's on bearings. I do love thumb stud knives on bearings. It's got giant, it's got uh, a giant handle with liners that are uh, very, robustly milled you can see in there that they really take a lot of that steel out so that it's not heavy but it's still rigid uh, a little bit on this side too down in there uh, so nicely sculpted g10 handle i opted for the tan comes in black and i think olive drab a liner lock allowing you easy quick deployment and just a great grip you got awesome uh, excellent access to the lock bar I do like how they did that it's very comfortable you're never sort of feeling you're never pinching at least I'm never pinching between the clip and the g10 side and this just is at the right angle that chamfer is at the right angle and just feels nice on the hand this thing is huge and when you flick it open it just uh, i'm sure the compressor in the microphone of this uh, iphone is not doing justice to that sound but it's it, it rockets open and locks open with a very with authority it sounds firearm like the way it does it uh big standoffs here for I like this big wide stout standoff that's a body screw and a clip screw speaking of the clip it is oddly thin for the size of this knife it does the job just fine you got decent tension on it 
uh, landing on a relatively smooth spot of the G G10 here. But um, I'd love to see this a little wider just for design sake. Um, other than that, you know, it's not necessary to make it bigger. Speaking of not necessary, you have a roto block here so that you can turn it. You see that piece turning in there? It stops you from being able to unlock the knife. Um, yeah, I feel like that's unnecessary. Maybe they thought since it's such a big knife, that should be an option, but I think it's an unnecessary option. Of course, with that giant blade and the bearings, it has fall shut action and a very satisfying sound when it closes into the, uh, into the detent. Love that. Handsome knife, big knife, lots of room. I have medium sized hands, lots of room. So someone with uh, big giant mitts will be able to, to use this knife, no problem. In reverse grip, how's it feel? It's awesome. Here, let me do that so I don't, it's awesome. I would, if I were to use this in reverse grip, I would come all the way down here. You could come up here, but I would come all the way down there and then reach up with my thumb. If you have really big hands and you can bury that in there, even better uh, but to me this is more of a forward um forward uh, grip style knife saber grip is awesome filipino grip is pretty good and this choked up grip for feather stick making is really good sandstorm k k110 steel i'm i'm really impressed by this they have a a titanium version that has some intricate uh, sculpting in the blade in terms of fuller and it has a really nice titanium handle but to me it would be too big f uh, for a big titanium folder so this one will do me just right uh, i'm going to show it with some other nice large folders and here's one it's the cold steel four max scout it's a big one but if you look at it next to it, it's got a bigger handle and a shorter blade, um, which is fine for this knife, especially if you're going to be doing ad hoc chopping and that kind of thing. This has different, much different geometry. This feels a little bit wedgier. Um, this is a, you know, obviously an incredibly stout knife. So there it is with that knife, the Formax Scout. Here it is with a knife that it kind of reminds me of. I'm not sure why, uh, but the... Boker Smatch It, which I put it, put it down next to it. It looks looks quite a bit smaller. That's just a four inch blade. It's amazing what a half inch can do. Yeah. I will avoid saying that's what she said. Uh, and then this one also compares favorably with this one. This is the old school M1 by Combative Edge. I love this knife. Probably at this point, we'll never ever get rid of this one. Uh, but they kind of sit in the same cabinet. These three all sit next to each other, um, along with this this last comparison knife, the also big Bastinelli Big Drago Tack. So this thing, they kind of remind me of one another. They're they're big. They're not cold steel uh, XL Voyager big, uh, but they're realistically big. Um, yeah, so there it is. And I mistakenly said uh, when I first got this and uh, did an unboxing of it, I said that this was larger than this, but indeed it is not. Uh, anyone with eyes can see. Um, so I was mistaken. But I'm not going to apologize because those who do public apologies always die the worst ways. So not going to do it. Not going to apologize. Uh, beautiful swedge, beautiful grind lines. Uh, Max Ace. Okay, okay, paying attention. I want more Max A's. These things are pretty sweet. All right, everybody, thanks for watching my video of the Max A's Sandstorm K in K110 and Tan G10. Take care.